Well, how's the campaign going? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet with you. Uh, my campaign is doing very well. It's doing exactly what we needed to do at this moment in time. The strategy we employed over a year ago of boots on the ground, visiting people in their living rooms across coffee tables, it's really paying off. We have a lot of name recognition now in the district. Do you think you're in a good position? Are you comfortable about your position coming into the primary? Do you think you'll win? I do believe we're going to win. I, I have no question that we're going to take the primary. I'm focusing on Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I understand she's one of the most powerful people in Congress. She has a war chest that's going to be unsurmountable, really, to beat. Um, however, our, our strategy of uh, people to people and kitchen table over kitchen table is going to can't counteract the millions of dollars that she already has. Why focus on Wasserman Schultz and not on your primary opponents? Because we've been in this race for over 18 months. We have the name recognition. We have the team that's built. And quite frankly, uh, they came into the, uh, the game rather late. And they don't have the name recognition. Uh, do you think that a Republican, even in this year that's probably going to be good for Republicans, really can pick off uh, a Democrat incum incumbent in such a strongly Democratic district? It won't be easy. But I do believe we do have that opportunity, if any other year, especially this year. There is a large incumbent negativity feeling out there right now. But uh, more importantly, it, it's, it, it's what's best for the country. If you look at the policies and the bills that she's supported and actually has been the cheerleader for Obamacare and cap and trade and stimulus, people have caught on that these bills are not good for the, for the future of their children. And we might very well be the first uh, Americans to leave a country worse off than uh, what we inherited. Uh, what are you hearing out on the campaign trail from people? Frustration, anger. Um, I was in a group uh, just last night, uh, meet and greet, over 50 people. I asked, I typically ask them how many uh, have gone to events like this before. No one has attended an event like this before. They, the silent majority is awakened. Uh, what, what kind of issues are they raising with you? Typically, they, they spending, jobs. Uh, they're very concerned about Obamacare. A lot of my district is of the elderly. They understand that cutting a half a trillion dollars for Medicare is going to affect them. Being in the assisted living business, I had a new resident um, come into our facility just this week, and a part of that process is getting a primary care physician to give them a physical. I couldn't find one in the Homestead area to take a new Medicare patient. Um, a job-related issue is one of the things I wanted to ask you about. One of the big things that's happened in recent weeks was uh, the extension of unemployment benefits. And Republicans in Congress, with the exception of a couple of senators, were universally opposed to that extension of unemployment benefits. What's your take on that and on that position? Well, I disagree with their comment, universally opposed. What they were universally opposed to is the extra spending without designating where it was going to come from or a corresponding cut in the budget. You see, when they had, they voted for the PAYGO system, but only if there isn't an emergency. And what they've done since they voted for the PAYGO system, which is a good political ploy and good political theater, is create emergencies. And these uh, extension of benefits was such an emergency, and therefore it didn't hold credibility as to your PAYGO obligation. So I believe that if we look at that budget, and, uh, and it just came out today, the CBO announced today that the, uh, the deficit for this calendar year, this fiscal year, uh, 2010, is going to be about 10% higher than they thought. What we need to do is start cutting the spending in some of the government programs which aren't effective and aren't efficient. So you would favor the extension of unemployment benefits if it were paid for? I believe that most Americans want the American dream. I believe most Americans would rather have a job. If we could actually morph the uh, unemployment compensation into more of a voucher system that uh, Reagan actually floated in 1983, in that instead of getting a check, they get something that the employer could use and therefore put the person back to work and get them back into the workplace, it would be more beneficial not only for the employee but also the employer. The thing is, these people have been out of work for 26 plus weeks, and I know what my children look like out of uh, school for only three months. What we need to do is concentrate on getting people into the job force again. And the only people that can do that are private enterprise, the small business people. So you wouldn't favor the extension even if it's paid for? I just I, want to make sure. It... No, I, I would favor an extension if it were paid for, but I would prefer a voucher system. Uh, one of the things that, though, comes up in this context is most Republicans favor extending the Bush era tax cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, do you? Absolutely. Do you think they have to be paid for in the same way? Well, they essentially are paid for. 
they're already in the budget. What we need to, this is not a revenue problem. The crisis we're facing is not a revenue problem, it's a spending problem. What we need to do is take a look at what we've created in, in the monstrosity called the United States government and get that back into size and start doing the things that the government was supposed to be doing and get out of the things that the government shouldn't be doing. But I think the CBO has said it would cost hundreds of billions of dollars, if not billions, to extend the, the Bush era tax cuts. I mean, do you think that that's appropriate without paying for it some other way? Well, we know what causes the economy to grow is jobs. And how you create jobs is by cutting taxes and giving the employer the, uh, the benefit and the dollars to choose and expand their business. You see, everything they've done, everything Debbie has voted for, and has cost business the uncertainty to move forward into whatever's going to happen in the future. The Obamacare is going to be an unexplained cost, cap and trade that they're trying to pass, perhaps in the uh, lame duck Congress that they're talking about. The, all the stimulus, the debt that they've created is going to be paid by somebody in the future, and that's typically the, the business person. Um, all these things have created the uncertainty that nobody wants to expand their business now. If the government would just back down and be quiet and repeal some of these obnoxious 2,700-page bills, then I think businessmen such as me and, and other Americans would actually want to expand their business. But I just want to make sure on the tax cuts, would, you favor, would they have to be paid for before you'd vote for them? I think we, the, the worst thing you want to do in a recession, as deep as this one is, is raise anybody's tax. We should continue with the tax cuts in place today if you want to recuperate the economy. Even if the tax cuts aren't paid for? You think they're that important? I believe we can make them paid for if we cut the spending. Well, but would you insist on that spending cut before voting for the tax cuts? I would insist on a balanced budget. So is that a yes or a no? I'm sorry. I would insist on a balanced budget. So if they, if they, I, what I believe is that it's a spending problem, and we have to approach it from that perspective. So you wouldn't vote for extending the Bush tax cuts unless they were paid for? I would vote to look at the entire budget as a whole and reduce the unnecessary waste and the programs that are not such as the Department of Agriculture. No, I understand. I'm just trying to get your position on the, tax would you, on the tax cuts and whether you'd vote for them if they were not paid for. I would not vote to raise anybody's taxes in a recession, whether they're paid for or not. Okay. Uh, one other kind of campaign trail related thing. Uh, do you have any new endorsements or any endorsements that you want to highlight, two or three uh, that you individuals or groups you'd like to talk sure. about? Or? We are endorsed on a continual basis. Um, we uh, spoke to uh, Ann Coulter's people today. She'll be coming down to join my campaign uh, Friday a week at a fundraiser. You attended the Dick Morris campaign event um, last October. We are getting national recognition. Um, they want to help me defeat Debbie Wilson and Schultz. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we are gaining uh, endorsements left and right. I don't have anyone specifically for your paper today, but uh, if you go to my website, you can see what's, what's basically been added. All right. Thanks very much, Robert Lowry. You're welcome.